All right. <clears throat> I think I've got those ones back. All right, well, in the respect for uh, everyone's time who's already on, I'll go ahead and get going with this. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, obviously with, uh, you know, kind of what's going on in the world and in, with coronavirus especially, it's something where we're sort of in uncharted territory. And I know I've been sitting in meetings basically almost on the daily, um, <clears throat> excuse me, almost on the daily with our management team trying to figure out, all right, what is our next step? And a lot of that is because you know, there's so much of it that's out of our control within, you know, within governmental things and with shutdowns and, you know, you get layoffs that, that are potential and we're still trying to figure out, you know, what's going to be the long-term plan with, uh, with things like the county. So it's going to be an interesting time, but, but there are some things that we can do that I think will benefit us as real estate brokers and real estate professionals. And that's really what I'm going to be focusing on today. So if I'm jumping in here, um, first thing I'll have everybody do for right now, just, just through this part, um, whenever you're in, um, of course, my uh, computer wants to do something right as I'm getting into this. We'll do that tomorrow. Okay. <clears throat> I'll restart now. Okay, so I'll, uh, I'll make sure that that doesn't restart. Let me go back here real quick. So while you guys are on here, uh, on your Zoom meeting or on your Zoom call, down at the bottom left of either your screen or on your phone, um, if you can see this slide, there should be a thing where you can turn off video and a thing where you can then turn off um, the, the mute or go ahead and mute the talking. So that way, if there's any other things that it doesn't interrupt uh, the presentation. So go ahead and click on that. And then if you have any questions, go ahead and jump into chat and uh, type those in and then we'll jump in and grab those later. So that'll, uh, that'll kind of get us off and get started. So, you know, the first thing I always like to do, I know this went out uh, a few different ways. So I wanted to give people kind of a, a quick little introduction to who I am. Um, I, I'm Aaron Stell, if you didn't know that already, and I'm part of a, a team with West. And for those of you who don't know who West is, West is actually the marketing and technology arm of WFG. So we have WFG National Title that does all of the, you know, they, they close all your escrows, they're doing all the title reports, they're doing all the customer service. And then we have West, which is a team of nerds, so you can see there. there so there's a bunch of other people like me across the country, um, but a bunch of people that our entire focus is on marketing and branding and strategies to help you guys with your business. Um, and so what we're rolling out that I'm kind of excited about right now is this modern day agent page. So if you go to the moderndayagent.com, um, you'll see a products repository. Um, but if you go to the moderndayagent.com forward slash Aaron Still, that's going to be my page where I'm going to push out future events. I'm going to be pushing out blog posts and content. Um, so it's just a way to kind of follow along with what I'm doing. So, you know, when it comes to all of this stuff, I'm definitely, I'm a full marketing nerd. I, you know, I love this stuff. It's my whole world and it's my whole life. So that's where I come from. Now, when we're talking about coronavirus, one thing I do want to put out there is I am definitely not a doctor. So I'm going off of, recommendations with this stuff from the CDC, the World Health Organization, WHO, um, and I want to really kind of stick to facts, but then there will be, um, you know, a lot of this where it's about safety, but then it's also about, uh, you know, going through and finding ways to, to really connect with people and then leverage, not leverage in a good way, the situation that's going on. Um, and I want to take a, a moment to really to emphasize this. Um, I've seen some different social media posts out there. I've seen some things, you know, pushed out in the real estate space where people are trying to leverage this as a sales opportunity or for their gain and or gain. And, you know, what I really want to mention is that right now is, is a time where it's about people. This is not a sales and marketing moment. It really is a people moment. And there are going to be some times if you treat it as such that you can mark it down the road. But right now it's really more about just connecting with people, keeping people safe, and then doing the right activities for the right people. Um, so, so that's really important as I go through this. Um, so, you know, now that I, now that I kind of went through all that, one of the things I do want to talk about is there was a really cool, well, really interesting article that was just published um, in the last day or so. And so if you see on that source, it was a bunch of people collaborating 
that that went through and they basically figured out like all right how many people are going to get this of them how many will need the hospital then require care and then obviously the fatality ratio and if you start looking at this this is where it varies very differently from say like the flu or other things that we've had in the past you know if you look at your your people that are over 70 or 80 um, you know, there's a there's a pretty high fatality rate, which is the scary part about that. So there is there is a risk with this, and there's a reason that um, that the government and that the world governments are in such a panic right now, because this is a you know a good chunk of our population. Um, this is another chart, and and one thing to note, I'm happy to share all of these slides with you, um, and I can actually do a follow up email that has linked to these different studies and things. If that's something you would like. Um, but I found this chart to be really interesting. And so the, the thought process, you know, between all of these different things is they're saying like, all right, how many people are going to be in critical care if we do nothing? And so that's the black line. And you can see the types of, of things that are being done on the side and how that will drastically bring down, you know, what's going on. And so, you know, the isolation, home quarantine, social distancing thing is a lot of what we're seeing right now. And if you notice, like it is, it's it's a quarter-ish of what um, what will be required if we don't do anything about it. Um, so I would definitely, you know, when we're when we're talking about this stuff, we want to follow the guidelines of what they're telling us. They have a lot of information. There's a lot of people that are a lot smarter than I am that are making these calls, and they're they know things that we don't know as well. Um, you know, we see a lot of things on Facebook. We see a lot of things on social. And you know, with that, it's you get misinformation, and you get you know you get a lot of stuff that does pop up. And, and what I would do is I would make sure that I would stick, um, you know, I would go through and I would stick to just the the facts that are coming out from people that are in the know. Um, and so, so I think that's you know an important thing to note. So, you know, with that, let's dive in though. Like, how is this affecting real estate? And it was interesting for you guys to be talking a little bit before. Um, before this about what you're seeing out in the market. And I can tell you what we're seeing is that from a, from a standpoint of like actual like real estate orders and things like that, we're not seeing much of a slowdown. Um, what we are seeing is we're seeing things like even lockbox um, activity and things like that are not really, they're not really slowing down all that much. Um, so it's, it's been something where the real estate market hasn't really been affected that much. However, we're also in the first week where, you know, things are really changing, where bars and restaurants are closing, where service industry and things like that are changing. So we're going to kind of have to wait and see what, uh, what things look like going forward. Um, but so far, it hasn't been a huge effect. Um, I did get a couple of people mentioning in the chat, you're getting feedback. So if you haven't yet, if you could jump in and mute yourself, um, just so we're not getting the, the feedback from other people that are on the call. Um, but now going back to, um, you know, the real estate space, you know, what we are seeing though is we're seeing where there are things like office closures. We're seeing things with limited deliveries where we can't get FedEx or UPS into certain buildings, um, uh, limited access to certain businesses. Um, where we really see this is things like care facilities, um, even like the, uh, you know, like the springs and places like that, where there is a higher po uh, population of at-risk people. And we're all, we're having a lot of people that are asking, all right, you know, how can I just get somebody to come to my house instead of me having to go out into the world? So, so those are kind of the day-to-day -day changes that we're seeing. Um, and that's what, uh, you know, that's, what's really going to affect you for a little while. Um, so, so it's going to be something where, you know, you're going to be isolated a lot more. And so that's where we're going to dive into tools and things like that, that will, um, that will, they'll help us out and they will make it easier for you guys to then do your jobs. So come on, click forward. There we go. And so, you know, then the question really comes down to, you know, what can we do? And, and that's both as, you know, real estate professionals, title professionals, mortgage professionals, you know, we're going to all have to come together in this and figure out, you know, what are the things that, that we can do to make this, you know, a safer process to really take care of each other, but also hopefully to be able to keep things going. Um, you know, I know when I was talking to Noah, our president, one of the things we really touched on was self-care. Um, and I was on a, uh, I was on a conference call or a webinar the other day, and the guy gave a really good analogy. And what he said is, you know, if you recall, anytime you go on an airplane and you have 
you know, the, the stewardess giving her thing or the steward or the flight attendant giving their spiel, they always say, in the case of an emergency, make sure you put on your oxygen mask first so that way you can help the person next to you. Um, and, and I thought that that in a situation like this, it's really important that, that we think about it that way because if you get yourself sick or you get the virus or something happens to you and you're now out of commission, there's no way you can really do anything for anyone else. So, and more importantly, it could be something where you actually do harm to other people. So, so the number one thing that I really wanna stress is, is making sure that you're following all the guidelines for yourself is going to be the best way that you can then provide service for other people as we're going forward. Um, you know, when we look at what they're pushing out right now from the CDC, um, a lot of it's kind of fairly self-explanatory and I'm not gonna dive into a lot of the things too much, but if you are feeling sick, if your kids are sick or if anybody around you has been sick, you know, stay away. If you're, you know, older or out risk, like stay in. Um, and then obviously the things like social distancing, washing your hands, you know, trying to keep surfaces clean. I mean, there's a, a lot of different things we can do along those, but, but really what we wanna do is follow along um, with these types of, of, of announcements and make sure you're at least aware of what they are. And the other thing I would say is if you don't have a quick, simple news source, so you're having a, a struggle kind of figuring out what's happening right now, there are two sites that I don't have on here, um, but I can send them out in a follow-up email. One is called The Skim, S-K-I-M-M, -M, and they do a great job. It's nonpartisan. And they go and they basically just say, what happened in the world yesterday? You get five emails a week, so one every morning, and it goes through the biggest news stories of the day. And obviously, you know, with this being a big news story, it's something that is, um, you know, it's touched on each day. And they'll, they'll then link out to the important pieces that you need to know. Um, and the other one is called News Bling. Uh, news is in news organization and bling like your blingy, uh, you know, your blingy type of jewelry, um, but news bling. And if you sign up for those, like I said, I'll send them out in a follow-up email. Um, they, will, they will kind of keep you appraised of what's going on in the world and what's going on with all of this. Um, the other thing that we need to do if we're, if we're trying to stay you know, with self-care and if we're trying to stay up to date with this, we have to have a plan of what we're going to do. You know, if something changes tomorrow and we're now on you know, a full quarantine or something changes tomorrow and now all of a sudden they're kind of loosening things up, how are we going to adapt to that? And the things that, that we're looking at right now is you know, we need to be able to articulate those to our clients as well. Um, you know, one of the things I'm sure you guys have seen you know, in the last week or so is I feel like I'm getting about five emails a day from companies telling me what their uh, policy is on this stuff. And so you guys need to be able to do the same thing. Oh, hold on, let me, uh, I, I'm getting more feedback. If you can hear me and you've got your, uh, if you've not muted yourself yet, the problem I have with trying to mute everyone is I have to go through several hundred people to find whoever it is that's not muted. So if you could mute yourself, that would be fantastic so you're not getting the echoing, please. Um, I'll try this, I'll see if I can get through. But, but in regards to the plan, um, you know, we're, we're gonna have several parts of it. And, and what's going on right now is that we have, um, you know, we, we have a very fluid situation where it's honestly changing almost by the day. And that's what makes this hard. Like you'll make a plan today and by tomorrow, it's already something that's, that's changed and different and we're gonna have to, to reset. But there are some things I think we can do that will be, you know, really there's gonna be pillars of how we're going to keep going on a go forward basis. Um, you know, one example with WFG is we, we've had a lot of different things that we've been trying to accomplish in regards to both internal and external things, you know, mostly about keeping separation, trying to avoid contact, especially excess contact. contact. Um, but here are the, the things that we have done just recently as a company to try to really keep people safe. Um, it sounds kind of silly, but one pen per person. Like you get your pen, you only use your pen. It's not being put back into a jar where it can contaminate anything else. You sign with that, you take it home. That's your little gift. Um, we're having a deep cleaning schedule where we have a, we have a rotation. So once a week, we'll have somebody in each of our Maybe. five offices in the Portland market go through and deep clean everything in addition Postal to- Service Customer Care Center. To hear our privacy policy, 
Press one. Uh, para continuar yeah. en español, oprima dos. Yeah. Marilyn, we got you on, uh, it's, it's not on mute. We you're not That, stop that, okay. Um, the next thing that we're doing is we're having enhanced signing areas. And what we mean by that is we're having areas where we're trying to bring all of the clients and we can give a full wipe down and scrubbing of those areas before they come in and then again after. So once again, just trying, it's the cleanliness thing. Um, and this is kind of a weird one, but we're starting to have health screening questionnaires sent out. Now, we don't need your entire medical history, but... Hey, Vince, oh, right, did you get it up? Well, Rod, I think we got you now. We just had another did one you, pop up. So did, you, did, did you click on the link I sent? We've got, we got another one that's popped up with, uh, with not being on mute. So if you could mute yourself, that would be great. Um, well, I've got it going, except I don't have any sound. <laughs> see here. Well, it's the only one that's got a link, a link to join the meeting. <laughs> you got to figure it out, Rod. <laughs> you can't hear except me. I can't figure out how to get sound on here. I'm trying to. Uh, no, you're. The, I just forwarded you a link that Tammy sent me. The mute button, so if you can't find, oh, there we go. We got, I got Rod there, I can mute him. Okay, that got that one taken care of. So I will, uh, I'll have to show. I, uh, well, I had originally everything muted all, but we'll, we'll go through. Anyway, so, so moving forward, um, oops, I need to close this out. Um, the things that, that we're doing here at WFG, if you can see those, um, is we are, we're just trying to do everything we can to keep our clients safe. And so, so with that, um, you know, we want to talk about the things that we're already doing, um, the things that we're going to start doing as we move forward, and then things your clients are going to need to do in contingencies on a go forward basis. So that's going to be, um, that's going to be the thing that we need to do first. And so, you know, as we walk through this plan, um, you know, the important pieces is, actually, I don't know why it's freezing up, is looking at, we want to highlight, you know, and, and the reason that we're bringing all this stuff up as part of the plan is we want to make sure that we can articulate to our clients what's happening throughout their transaction to keep both you safe and them safe. Um, and ideally, all the other people that are, um, you know, that are going to be either walking through their houses or whose houses they are going to walk through. And so, you know, when we look at this, the first things I look at are a few tools. And, and I would absolutely go through and highlight this as I'm going through either a buyer consultation or a listing presentation. And, and you guys all do this, you know, somewhat intuitively, but having a paperless strategy where you're using, you know, zip forms, DocuSign, SkySlope, and there, I know there's about a thousand other ones when you get into paperless pipeline and things like this. These are all ways that you're going to be able to transact without having to actually be face to face. You're not going to have to be touching anything. You're not going to have to do anything that would actually give any type of risk or exposure. So I would make sure I bring this up in both of those presentations. Um, the other thing I would do is I would talk about, you know, if, if it's listing marketing, I would talk about the extra things you're going to do. And don't worry, I'm going to dive deeper into both of these that will make it to where fewer people will need to walk through the house. Um, and I know that seems counterintuitive, but in this situation, what we want to do is get people either more information or more clear information to where they either know that they're going to want that before they walk into it, or if it's not going to be something that works for them, they can disqualify it ahead of time. And so, so listing marketing is another thing that I'm going to look at and higher quality listing marketing is going to be something that actually benefits you and helps you out through this process. Um, now with the Nike or the, the buyer process, the things that I would be highlighting, and these are things that you already are doing, is giving them a great search tool to where they can, you know, they can basically see what's around there. And that's where using Google Street View, encourage them to drive by before showings. Um, you know, the, the Matterport type videos, 3D, those are the types of things that you're giving your buyers, um, you know, prior to ever going through and walking into a house. And, and once again, we're going to dive a little deeper into both buying and listing marketing, but I kind of wanted to give you guys some ideas of things that, that you're probably doing already that you don't think about because it's intuitive and part of your process at this point in time. Um, 
but the you know but it's something that is important for them to know another one this might be a good reason to talk about pre-approval letters and things like that like I, I i'm not going to go show people houses and expose myself them and listings to somebody that can't actually afford something or isn't already pre-approved so so those are the types of things i would highlight that can actually benefit you and it will be part of something that you can talk about as part of your coronavirus plan now this is where it starts to, to change and this is where at least for me this is what really gets my brain going like what are the things that we can start doing um, that honestly i think will be they'll be really beneficial for this but i think a lot of them will be something you can adopt in a go forward basis which will help you out um, you know the first one is is this simple thing this is a sign we have up at all of our offices um, but you know having a clever way to go about it but saying look i, I know and Believe me, I know a lot of you on this call, your, your natural instinct is to either hug or shake a hand or be friendly because that's the type of people you are. You know, that, that's just your personality. But during this time, if you can avoid that, if you can find ways to say like, look, the reason I'm not doing this is actually because I do care about you more. So, so we're not going to hug, we're not gonna shake hands. You know, if you wanna do the little padded elbow bump or you wanna just, you know, do the air hug or something, great. But for right now, and especially if you're going to be in groups, little things like just not having that personal touch is really going to be important and, and so i would find ways to just make that clear whether it be a sign like this or whether it be something you just articulate right up front and be like look i love you but we're not going to be shaking hands or we're not going to be hugging through this thing at least for a little while the next one and uh, we're all having our experience with it right now zoom calls and you know this is something i've actually been talking about for probably you know a year and a half now or something like that my team and i are on a call every friday and we're we're collaborating from all over the country about you know the things that are going on in real estate and how we're helping our clients and what's working and what's not um, but from a standpoint of interacting with your clients there's two ways where i see this really important or becoming really important one this allows you to have conversations with multiple people from all over everywhere about things that are going on inside of that transaction. So where I would use this is, you know, in a, in a market like we have now, where houses are literally getting multiple offers inside of hours, and you need to make sure that you're having a, you know, a conversation with all of the de uh, decision makers or deciding parties, you know, you can have the, the two parties involved, the mortgage broker and the realtor, all on a Zoom call at the same time, getting this taken care of to where you know like, okay, yes, I can go up that extra 5,000 or I am pre-approved to that much and we do feel comfortable writing that offer or we don't. And you know, it's not three different calls. It's not 27 different text messages. It's not playing telephone back and forth. Everybody's there, can see each other's face if you want to and having the conversation at one point in time. Um, the other thing that this does is if it's something that you start getting used to, uh, it really does allow you to become more productive. Um, you know, I know Wendy that works in our Seattle operation, she blocks out, you know, large chunks of her day, um, Mondays, I believe, if, if Wendy's on the call, but I believe it's Mondays where she does all just Correct. Zoom calls and she does not have to drive all over, all over Seattle area. She doesn't have to sit in traffic, but yet she can service people. And so, especially for you guys that are, that are really busy and have a lot of clients, this can be a way to connect with all of these different people in a very effective manner without having to drive all over town. So, so Zoom's one of my favorite, um, partially because it works on basically every operating system. Um, you know, it works on I iPhone, it works on Android, it works on your computer. So it's a, it's a really simple and more importantly, free tool that you can actually use to stay in touch with people. The next one is, is, you know, and this is something that we're gonna dive into a couple of different ways, but you know, one of the things we look at is how can we connect with our clients where they are? And now basically all of these different chat programs have started allowing people to basically have video calls and sometimes even video calls with multiple people. So using FaceTime, using the Instagram video chat, using Facebook Messenger, it's a way for you to talk in real time live video that can make it to where you can, you know, you can give tours. Um, you know, one of the, the big things that we've been talking about recently is, is even things like nonverbal communication and, and figuring out like, you know, when you, when you see somebody all of a sudden, their whole face changes when you're telling them something, you know, think about when you have to ask somebody for a price reduction and if you can't be there in person or you have to have a conversation about, you know, something they're not going to, to necessarily like, but it has to get done right now. 
you know, using one of these types of chats or a Zoom call allows you to see what their true reaction is. And especially if you're doing something, you know, via email or text message, that can be completely misconstrued. And with this, your face is going to give you away. Um, and, and so hopefully what this does is it actually adds a layer of, you know, where, where it's clarity, number one, it, it allows you to get a true uh, indicator of what it is. And really what we're looking for is, is we're wanting to make sure everybody's on the same page. And so that's where, you know, using these, these built-in uh, messaging apps that most people have already can make just interacting with your client a very simple, uh, you know, very easy thing to do. The other one that we really like, and this one's not free, and so that's why I put this at a slightly different level, but using BombBomb. BombBomb is such a cool tool. It integrates with, well, just about everything, and especially if you're trying to give, say, weekly client updates or you're trying to give status updates, um, if you're trying to, to go through and, and talk to somebody about something that's happening but you don't want to actually meet in person, let's say that they are somebody who's an at-risk person or they've been sick, this is a great way for you to have that conversation but yet, unlike the others where you have to do it live and they can see everything that's going on, this one you can record it and then send it when you feel comfortable with whatever that message is. And then also that person can pick up and look at it whenever they're ready. Because I, I can tell you from personal experience, there's a lot of times you'll get that, you know, that FaceTime message or that, that FaceTime ring. It's not even a message. And, and you're like, nope, I'm not picking that up right now because I'm either driving down the road or you're in a place where you don't feel comfortable talking that way. BombBomb Bomb allows you to scale that, have the same messaging go out, and yet it's, it's on your time and on their time versus having to be live. Um, and so, so BombBomb Bomb's one that we love from a client interaction standpoint. Now, with the buyer process, there are, are a few things that we're starting to see that we think might start to become a little more normal here in the, in the near future. Um, this is one, it really harkens back to my, uh, my days as a kid where we'd walk into a store and of course being a kid, you'd want to touch everything. And my mom would instantly look at us and be like, look with your eyes, not with your hands. And the whole point was, you know, in that situation, she didn't want us to break anything. But in this situation, if you go through and you're, you know, walking through the house, but you're not actually touching anything, your risk of exposure is going to be substantially smaller. You know, keep back just a little bit. Um, you know, we'll talk about this a little bit in the, or we're going to talk about this on the listing side as well, but there's things they can do that make this easier, where if you just walk through the property and you're not actually touching anything, your risk is getting to, it's going to be fairly small, which is nice. You're not touching all the hard surfaces. You're not touching door handles. You're not touching cabinetry. You're not touching light switches where everybody else's hands and fingers and things like that are touching as well. So, so going through and having a, a process with no touching or basically not, not, using your hands to use it or to do anything is a, is a simple way to basically avoid any of that contact or cross-contamination. Um, the other one, clean showings. You know, this is getting to be more common. We're hearing about it a lot. Having Purell at the, the front door on the kitchen counter or something like that. Um, I've even been hearing experiences where people are leaving basically booties for your feet and rubber gloves for your hands. So if you're walking through and touching anything, uh, both you're clear and they're clear, um, which is, it's a, you know, simple thing if you can get it. I guess that's the, the one issue right now is we are having, you know, a lot of people that are having trouble by, with actually getting, you know, these types of cleaning supplies. Um, but, but clean slow or clean showings where maybe it's you, the agent that has rubber gloves on, you open things up and the buyer just stays away and doesn't actually um, do anything can be really important. Sorry, I have somebody raising their hand real quick here. Sorry, I'm just gonna see, I was going to see questions. Um, and so I'll bring these things up, keep the chat stuff coming. I'm, uh, I'm definitely paying attention to that. Um, so I do know, so the question came up and this is a, a valid question. Megan said, um, you know, aren't hospitals already expressing concerns for low glove supplies? Um, I have heard that. Um, it, it's, you know, it's one of the things that, that yes, if, if, I wouldn't, I wouldn't make this my number one priority and definitely we want hospitals to have them before you do as real estate professionals or we do as real estate professionals. Um, but if there, you know, if there's something you can do to, you know, protect yourselves or you already have some around the house or they are things like kitchen gloves or there are things like even gardening gloves that can be like washed and reused. I mean, there's different way to, to find gloves. So I don't want to get too hung up necessarily on just they have to be disposable hospital grade gloves. 
Um, but wearing gloves is something you could do that would protect both you and the homeowner. So I do appreciate you guys having the feedback on that. Um, the next thing we're looking at here is, you know, going through and having the, you know, with the, with the buyer process, that same health questionnaire, I, I think is relevant in this time, because what you see is people are like, I feel fine. And what we've seen with this, this whole process is there can be several days or a week where people feel fine, but are, have been exposed or are actually sick at that point in time. And so, you know, if somebody's got, you know, somebody in their household that's been sick, like let's say it's a, a husband and wife and the wife's sick. So she's like, well, I'm going to stay home. Why don't you just go? Well, at that point you've been exposed as well. So I would say if there's anybody in the house that's sick, like, no, let's just, let's just put this off. Let's not do that right now. Um, and, and just make sure that, that we're keeping the germs contained and quarantined as much as possible. So, so if there's been kids or if there's been, you've been in an office where people are sick, like give yourself the time to process before you go looking at anything. Um, the other one that we really like is, is what we call the live digital walkthrough. Um, and there's a couple ways that this can be executed. I know Zillow and Trulia have been putting some of these out, but the way that I would actually work this is if I'm an agent or I'm, you know, a professional like you guys are, I'm going to have, you know, opportunities where I could go into properties, make sure that I'm safe. And I could do a Facebook live. I could do an Instagram live. I could do any of those types of, of chats that we talked about before and really walk you through the entire house. I can even open up cabinets. I can op door, open up doors if I have my gloves on. You know, I can walk you through that entire place so you don't need to. So now instead of three or four, you know, potentially five or six people walking through this house, now you've got one. Um, and if you have, I know this doesn't probably happen a lot when you're on the buyer side, but if you have a couple of people looking at the same unit, that could even be something where you walk through the house twice with both sets of buyers and make sure that once again, the, the risk of exposure is even smaller. So we've definitely been hearing about this. This is something that I think can be, um, you know, beneficial. And once again, the fewer people that go in and out uh, is going to be better in regards to the cross-contamination. Um, the other one that we really like, and this is from a communication standpoint, is a program called Slack. And, and this is something we use we use it all the time um, inside of our, you know, our group of nerds. Uh, but we've seen a lot of our, our, especially real estate teams that have started to use Slack. And the reason that Slack is so nice is it allows you to keep a whole bunch of different channels all in one messaging service. So instead of having to go back and find, like, like for example, what we'll see is, you know, our client will have a message going on with, uh, you know, the, the buyer one, a message going on with buyer two, a message going on with both of them. And there's all this communication going back and forth, which doesn't always get relayed to the other person. Well, with Slack, you can do a lot of that stuff, but it all lives in one place. And so it can, you, you can have different channels and, and by channels, I basically mean threads. If you're thinking kind of, of in the, uh, in the, um, the world of text messaging, um, but it's just, it's such a cool, it's, a, it's such a cool thing to do with, uh, you know, with your clients where you have all of the different communications, all the different, you know, stuff, because it's all searchable and sortable. Um, it's all, and it's free um, in one simple, convenient space. So now let's dive in a little bit to the listing process. And I think this is where, you know, you can make an impact with buyers because you're, you're taking one person into multiple houses. Um, but on the same hand, you know, your, your, or as a listing agent, you're going to have clients that have potential to get exposure from a lot of people walking through their house. And I think this is where you can really do some things to, to kind of change it. Um, and, and when we're looking at what we can do, you know, the first thing that we look at is, you know, having a clean showing process. Um, and these are the things I would do and I would instruct my client to do before they left the house, if this is possible. So have all the lights turned on and then instruct the buyers not to touch any of the lights and leave them on. Open, you don't have to open all the cabinet doors, but at least open up closets or cabinets that would most likely help sell that house. So, you know, maybe the, the master bedroom closet, if there's one kitchen cabinet or something like that, that really kind of shows how stuff fits in there, open that up so they're not touching any of that. Um, have the rooms open already so that way they can walk in and out without touching anything. Um, one great recommendation we heard is have soap at every single sink. Um, I always know that there's, there's confliction, there's a lot of conflicted opinions on this, but, um, you know, 
eventually if you're on tour, your, your buyer's probably gonna wanna use the restroom at some point in time and they'll end up doing that. So making sure that there's soap so they can take, you know, they can actually wash their hands afterward can be important. Um, rubber gloves once again, or gloves in general, and then ham hand sanitizer if possible. And, and I know, once again, I, I've been to the grocery stores recently, I've seen those empty shelves. So if you can't do this, I get it. Um, but the other thing that you can do is bleach water with a lot of this stuff. And I know you're not gonna wanna dip your hands in that, but bleach water is just as effective. And with the CDC, that's what they're even re are recommending. Um, and if you just Google you know, bleach water or CDC, or I can even send you the link, they'll give you the ratios to make sure that it's actually killing all the germs without, uh, without harming you or everything around. Um, the next thing we're looking at with, with the process of listing, and we see some of this already, um, but having 3D tours is a way where you could basically keep people out of your house if you really wanted to, um, at least for the short term. So, you know, Matterport has been the industry standard for quite some time. You can create the dollhouse view, which is what you see here on the top left. Um, but you can also create floor plans and it allows people to walk room by room. It is a full 360. You can look up and down. It, it, it gives people a phenomenal um, appearance as to, or, or a phenomenal view as to what the appearance of that house truly is. Um, and so, you know, if you have that, you could literally make it to where they, they, you have all of your clients do the 3D walkthrough before you'll ever show them the house. Or you can even do something, and we'll dive into this a little later, where you say, all right, all showings via Matterport tour, and then offer subject to interior inspection. Um, iStaging is another company that does this process. The difference with iStaging versus Matterport, Matterport's one where you're going to want to bring in a company to do that. iStaging basically takes one of the different apps that's out there on your phone or on your camera that can create 3D tours and they stitch it all together and make it look pretty. So, so really you have to have another program to make this one work. But if you're a do-it-yourselfer and you kind of know how to do this stuff, it can be a cheaper way to go through and get 3D tours for the house. Um, and so I would recommend, you know, even if it's not something you normally do, even on low end houses or whatever, I would do 3D tours on every single one of my properties, hoping that people will then walk through and be willing to even potentially write offers without having ever been inside of that house. Um, the other thing that, that we like to talk about, and one of the big points of contention that we see is, we'll have a lot of people that say, all right, I've seen all the pictures, I get what the house looks like, I like it, but I can't really get a feel for the, the actual flow of the house or how things are laid out. Um, and Floor Planner is actually a company that they're tied to RMLS. So if you have RMLS access here in Portland, that you can go through and basically do a sketch on a piece of paper and they'll turn it into something professional. Um, and they have multiple different, you know, depending on how much you want to spend, ways that they can make this happen. But really a lot of times this is what buyers want to see. If they can do a walkthrough of the house and then see a full floor plan of it, that will give them a pretty good idea whether or not they're actually interested in that house. And what I'm really looking for, and I know this is kind of sacrilege for a lot of listing agents, but I'm looking for uh, a way to disqualify people that are literally just gonna walk through and kick the tires because that is creating exposure for that, that person that owns the house. And the other thing that that's doing is it's also making it to where, you know, you're now having that person come through and waste their time knowing that that's not going to be a place that they're going to really fall into or they're, they're going to fall in love with or really want to purchase. So, so adding a floor plan in, like I said, floor planner is already tied into RMLS and it's a great program to make sure that that's included with your ML or your MLS listing. Um, the other thing that we've been looking at, I was actually working with Megan in our customer service department just this week of getting rid of flyers, paper flyers, and especially on say high end listings where you, you usually print out say a really nice brochure. Like we have some, you know, some clients that'll do six, eight, 10 page, full color, beautiful, glossy brochures. Well, instead of printing those out, you can take that same file and upload it to issue and with issue, it basically turns it into a little digital magazine. So you could have just a, a web address that goes to this issue account, and then it would have all the information for that property. Number one, you can track it because you'll be able to see how many people have clicked on it. And number two, nobody's then going to be touching things. Um, and that's really what we're trying to accomplish with this. So it could save you some printing costs on the side, um, but from, a, from an actual coronavirus standpoint, this is a way for you to keep people from touching things. And, and you know, as a lot of you know, a lot of what people end up doing with those 
is they will pick them up, flip through them, and especially if they're a really nice book, they'll sit there and they'll put it right back down. So now they've touched that thing, got their germs all over it, put it back down, and the next person that walks in will grab that exact same piece of material. Um, so this is a way to really solve that problem. They're just now doing it on their, um, their iPhone or their Android while they're there, or they can go back and look at it later. Um, the other thing is, and I mentioned this a little bit earlier, you know, if I have a seller right now that is, is at risk, so, you know, you're talking about that 60 plus, 70 plus pre-existing condition type person, you know, in the, in the tenant space or in the rental unit space, you know, subject to interior inspection has been something that's been around for a long time. And if I have somebody that I'm worried about that, that needs to sell their house, I'm going to create the 3D tour. I'm going to have them virtually walk through it. And then I'm going to say all offers are subject to interior inspection. It's just going to keep them all out. And then, you know, you can weed through what they're, you know, if there's multiple offers coming in, you can weed through the, the people that are actually serious versus the ones that aren't, or you legitimately just have one person that ends up walking through that house. And then, you know, they'll go through their, their traditional process. But once again, the risk of exposure is so much smaller if you have fewer people that are coming through the property. So, you know, something subject to interior inspection, isn't something that I would actually feel bad about right now, especially if it's an at-risk client. Um, and this is some of the creative type stuff that we've seen lately. So digital and virtual open houses. And, and what I mean by this is basically you create a Facebook event and you go live at that time and you can walk through the house, people can ask you questions, um, and, and it allows one person to be in going through the house touring it with people all over the internet jumping in and being able to see what it is that you're seeing. And, you know, you could do this with several different platforms, but a Facebook live event is a really easy way to go about this. Um, I know I've seen in uh, masters in real estate here in Portland, a couple of agents. Um, I know Andy Blackwell is one of them that is trying to really push this to keep um, you know, the, the everyday person out of the house, um, especially if it's just the neighbor wanting to know what's going on there. So virtual open houses is something that, that I think could be very beneficial to still allow people to see it and allow people to see it in mass, um, but not necessarily to have to actually have them walking through. And, you know, I know open houses are a very touchy subject right now too, um, you know, but based on trying to create separation, you know, having only a certain number of people in the house at a time and having people wait outside and wiping down surfaces, you know, all of that stuff should be happening as well. But this eliminates the need for a lot of that stuff. You know, if you can do it all virtually, then the people don't even have to drive across town to see it. They can get walked through, they can have questions answered. You as the listing agent, um, you know, can be the one that controls, you know, how, how the, it's talked about in regards to the house. And then, you know, as long as your buyers know that it's something that, that, you know, they need to talk to you once it's time to sell. And I would like to think that the code of ethics would come in here and people wouldn't be trying to poach other agents, buyers in this situation. You know, it's a really easy way for you to then see that property. So, you know, the other thing that we got to look at here is just because you know, we're not transactionally involved with people. There is a lot of other stuff going on. And, you know, it's a very trepidatious time for a lot of people. And so, you know, we look at the other thing, like what are the things we can do with our past clients? And the, the thing we keep coming back to is how can we create community? And this goes all the way back to what I talked about at the very beginning. Like this isn't a sales and marketing opportunity. This is a people opportunity. And so with this client process, um, you know, I want to make sure that we think about it in that way. So like, how can you do that without having client parties or get togethers or, or, you know, going out to coffee or lunch or brunch or any of those things you can't do. And so, you know, one of the things that we've seen people do is that they, um, you know, they'll go through and they'll just be willing to drop food off, especially for people that are at risk, you know, with a lot of the restaurants here in Oregon, they can't have people inside but they can do things like takeout and you know yes you can get you know either uber eats or doordash or things like that but especially if you have older clients like they're probably not doing that at least that's what we've seen from our experience so being willing to just go pick something up drop it off on their front doorstep and then walk away and say like hey your food's on the front porch this can be the same thing with cleaning supplies this can be the same thing with you know really just about anything but but being willing to kind of be that have that servant mentality um, is a way to really keep in touch with people and just say, hey, do you need something right now? 
Um, and there are going to be people that are, are scared or not wanting to go outside and they're not wanting to have to go to grocery stores and places like that. Um, this is another one that I think is, is quite clever. Um, and that's Facebook watch parties. And what this is, is you can literally pick a show or a video that you're going to watch and have a whole string of people talking about it on the side. And so it, while you're not sitting in the same room, you can still make the same little jokes. You can still have the little conversations. You're watching the show all at the same time. And so it's a really easy way to feel like you're sitting in the same room as somebody else without actually having to do it. And if we get to a point where everyone is quarantined or basically locked inside their house, you know, this is gonna be something that, that we're gonna need to look at is how do you connect with people outside of your house while you're stuck inside? Um, and I can tell you, you know, as somebody that, that likes to get out of my house as much as possible and has been working from home a lot, you start to feel kind of claustrophobic and cooped up really quickly. So finding things like this that you can do that does create that community um, is something that will be very beneficial. And, and so that's something that, that we can do, you know, just with friends or it can be with past clients. The other one, and this is a, this is kind of a, a random one, but I actually saw a link today that said, you know, with the, with all of the people being sequestered that there's more loneliness going around than you know at any other point in time and i know you know for my house if i didn't have my dog like it would be really quiet a lot of time and she's the one like during the day that's coming around and you know just checking on me and hanging out and, and so so the dog is a very important thing that that like a lot of people may want but don't have and i, and I don't want to say make a, a knee-jerk reaction and get you know a long-term responsibility for a, a short-term pain but you know if you want to get you know a cat or a dog or suggest something like that you know they need to be rescued too and it's something where it will keep people happy or happier while we're being stuck inside or while we're not being able to have the same sort of interactions that we normally would um, you know person to person um, so one thing I want to touch about, touch on real quick. Um, so for everybody that's an organ licensee, um, the way that we're, you know, this is all kind of new for us because we're sort of an uncharted territory too. And if you're wanting to get your CE credit hour, um, email your license number to credit hour at wfgnationaltitle.com. I'm going to leave that up there for just a second while I pop into the chat here for a minute. Um, his said, Heather said cute dog for rent. I, honestly, I don't think that is a, uh, I don't think that's a bad idea at all either. If you do have pets and somebody wants to just borrow the dog overnight or take care of the dog overnight, you know, I would say make something like that happen. Um, and so, and I know a couple other questions about, you know, will RMLS let you post links to open house or Facebook live open houses? Um, I don't know about that. Honestly, I, I don't think that that would be, um, I don't know that you can do that, but I would I would double check on that and, and I would see. But but regardless, you could at least push it out using Facebook ads and things like that, which we're happy to help you guys with. Um, now, you know, if we're if we're looking at this and we're we're trying to figure out there, there's one real important thing that I kind of want everybody to look at and see. And that, you know, the more most important thing about all this is, you know, if we can create a community where we're figuring out how to get things done, we're working together. But more importantly, just following the guidelines that are being put out in front of us. You know, we still can be, uh, we can be professional, we can still get work done, we can still take our clients, um, but we're all in this together. So everybody needs to do their best to follow the rules. And if you can use some of these tools to make your life and your, your business a little bit easier, you know, that would be, that would be fantastic. But it, it really is going to take a village. It's going to take the community and really in this situation, the whole world, um, you know, working together in order to get through this and get past it. And it's, it's not something we've ever had to deal with. So it's kind of uncharted territories that will, that will constantly be flowing and we're going to have to adapt and change a little bit. Um, so, you know, lastly, what I do want to talk about is I am going to be putting out more content. Um, for those of you that know people that, that didn't get into this webinar, I know it was full. I'm going to be doing an encore, so I will be creating um, another video or I'll be doing another webinar next week. Um, I did record this, so we should, um, I should be able to push that out to everyone. Um, but if you go to my page, themoderndayagent.com forward slash Aaron Stell, you can follow these things. Um, connect with me on social there. You can see I've got, uh, I've got my Facebook account, my LinkedIn account, I've got my Instagram account. Um, so by all means, connect with me. I would love to, to connect with everybody on here. 
and I really do appreciate you guys, you know, taking the time out of your day. And, and I love the, the interaction and the connection as well, you know, on chat. So I appreciate it. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to jump on um, the chat here and I'm going to go ahead and open it up to a few questions. Um, 